Apple's five lever, no three lever because of five kilos. I don't know. This is, isn't it for the next episode? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Another one <laughs> promised. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Hackcast. This is the official podcast of Hacksoft where we try to find the intersection between software development and the business of running a software development company with an Eastern European point of view, more, specific, more specifically Bulgaria. Uh, Greece is right next to Bulgaria if you want to find us on the map. Ivo, how are you today? Well, it's Tuesday, we are recording Hackcast. I'm great. What about you? I'm feeling great. We are recording in the morning. We already had uh, our coffee, so we should be uh, good to go. And today we have a really, really interesting topic. We are going to talk about the art of managing the relationship with your clients, something extremely important. And with us today, we have one of the OGs of the Bulgarian IT industry, Sabiangi Wolf, more than 20 years of experience, senior account manager at Nemechek Bulgaria, which is also one of the oldest IT companies in Bulgaria. So Sabi, Thank you very much for being here and please tell a couple of words about you. Well, I'm feeling good as well. <laughs> <laughs> this morning is quite chilly, uh, yeah. which is normal for the season. And I'm happy to be here. Uh, very nice to do. And thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, as you said, I'm, I'm managing teams and customers and clients and partners, whatever you, you say, um, and being in the business for quite a long. Yep. Ha happen to be manager. My my background is uh, technical. Uh, started with uh, Prolog. Really? Uh, yeah. You started with Prolog? Yeah, I started with that and then transferred oh, wow. to Java. So that's a strange way to start. Yeah, <laughs> twisted mind <laughs> from the beginning. So okay. it, it is not a normal birth, let, let's say. Uh, but happen to be uh, some kind of manager mm. of many many things uh, recently and. Apart from that, father of two boys, uh, regular dude with a lot of hobbies. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're going to gonna touch on the hobbies when we when yeah, we get okay, to, okay. to to the, to the human part of things. It. Yeah, uh, and we we have an interesting story with Sabi. Uh, I think we first met ten something like between eight to ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, That's probably not very. Mm, how to say, wise to say when we met because this shows some years ago. Okay, some, some years, years ago. ago when we were uh, still doing we, when we were only doing Hack Bulgaria, yeah. which was our uh, like academy hacker school or basically courses. And I remember we were working back then with uh, with Nemechek Bulgaria, and I remember that Sabi came to one of the classes and did a very very interesting workshop that was completely non technical. Uh, it was the first thing that we were uh, ever like seeing uh, in the non-technical yeah. uh, sphere, and it was about uh, cosplaying different scenarios between teams and clients. And I, I, I still remember how alien this felt to me, and I was like, "Why are we doing this? We 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 just want to develop software. Just leave us out of this." And some years forward in the future, uh, <laughs> I could have not been more wrong because uh, managing and having relationships with your clients turns out to be quite important. And when we talk about business, it can be even more important than the actual work that we do. And yeah, the funny part is that I still do it. Uh, still go to universities and schools and academies not very often academies, mm. but more schools and universities, uh, to share this knowledge. Because as you said, when you're young and you're going into the profession, you think that everything is code. Mm. Mm. Suddenly, mm. at mm. some point, five, five, ten years later, it turns out that it turns out it's that's not the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So still doing it. <laughs> if someone wants to, to get some knowledge, uh, yeah. I can be invited. And I think everyone loved that. Uh, in terms of the, the students? We're trying. We're yeah. trying. It was new to everyone, and it was a point of view that no one had even thought about, so it was quite refreshing uh, from all the technical topics. And uh, 
how, how to how to say when we were first talking with Sabi about uh, doing a podcast episode, we were uh, re- revolving around leadership. And again, I'm making a promise. Sorry, Teddy. We will bring Sabi back, and we will focus more on the leadership part part of it. Another episode promise. <laughs> I am the episode pro- promiser here. Uh, yet we decided to focus on managing the relationship with the clients because this is a topic that's not very often discussed. It's more on the business side of things, and it can make or break basically everything. And the context is in Bulgaria, our industry, we are mostly Mm -hmm. Mm service-oriented. And when you are mostly service-oriented, this means that we are working with clients from all over the world. And when we had Timo here, uh, he, he said that, Sometimes we are tier two, meaning there is a consultant working with the client and then this consultant outsources something to us. But sometimes we are tier one where we work directly with the client and build the software and do the business part uh, for them. Yet there's always a client. And when there is a client, there is a relationship to be managed. And I like to open the discussion with uh, with this, with Sabi to give like an overview of his understanding when you are in a position of a service company and you have a client. Like, what's what's happening then? Where well, where do we start? I have to say that I don't have experience with the with being second level. Uh, all right. Okay. So, obviously, we are old company, and majority of our clients are directly yeah. the, the owners of the of the software that mm-hmm. we are producing. Uh, the second thing is my specialty is big corporations mm. so i don't have a lot of experience with with small companies uh, and startups although i personally have and uh Nemechek, bulgaria where i work uh, have broader experience with different kind of customers my personal experience and skill let's say mm. is w- with the bigger corporations all right all right and uh to your question what does it mean it means everything it's like a so Probably I won't be wrong if I say that this is a relationship like in your family, like in your with, with your friends. So it's it's demanding, mm. uh, and it goes from all the spectrum of the possible relationships. I mean, from emotional to logical to, mm. to everything. So it is just normal relationship. I would yeah. I would say between two people. But it's quite hidden, but it's quite hidden. You you don't often think about it when you are in the industry and you're doing software development job and software engineering. You don't often think about this relationship existing first and then managing second. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're right for for some roles. Mm. Uh, If you you have uh, uh, a manager or lead accountant Mm. like Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. I am, Mm. there is someone who thinks about that. So if you're... Uh, regular dude that that codes you don't have to think about it no. until you're visible and until you are important enough yeah with your knowledge skill and contribution so your opinion matters mm. Mm. then you are part of this your relationship as relationship. well it's and really well said yeah. yeah and you know it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And when when there is a client and there's a relationship with the client, we usually start talking about things like, hey, uh, there's like a budget and someone decides about this budget. Hey, there are decisions to be made and someone is or is not a decision maker. And all those things, if you have not been exposed to it before, that can be quite, quite confusing because the, when we were starting and we were quite naive uh, and stupid, like uh, a good combination of, of the two, we were thinking about, hey, the cl- the only thing that the client wants from us is to build the software. Mm-hmm. And we were extremely focused on building the software. And every time that something happened that broke the relationship with the client, we were caught by surprise. We were like, we are doing a perfect job. Everything gets delivered on time. We are even exceeding expectations. Uh, yet the client does not seem to be happy uh, working with us. And when we started poking around, uh, we, we, we started figuring out that the person that we are talking to is not a decision maker of, of any kind or mm-hmm. any sort. And this was the, f- the first thing that we were exposed to was we, we, we had a great relationship with the person that we were talking to. We were delivering everything and actually helping the business. 
yet the decision makers had a very negative view of us and the work that we're doing and we don't know why so it was I, I don't know how we how we figure I think someone told us hey you should meet those, those those folks and talk with them and give your side of the story and we tried doing this and we found out that it's it's not as easy to go and meet the CEO of a big company like mm -hmm. we send an email hey let's meet and <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Next no, time. Not, nothing happens. And then we, we figured out that uh, the budget was allocated differently and they were going to onboard a different company to work alongside us. And we were really like, we were having very strong negative feelings towards the entire company because all of this right, happened. Right, of course. Yeah. Of course. And um, this was our first experience. And we had to learn from it. It was not a good uh, experience. We're having similar kind of experience mm. right now. Uh, and this is not unusual. But as you said, when, when, when it is the first time mm. and you realize how colorful the world is, mm. and it might take you by surprise. Yeah. If, you're, if you have been part of bigger group or... in in a bigger company or bigger group of friends, mm. you might heard about such things. So yeah. you may have some, how to say, assumption. Mm. Yes, assumptions. We had a lot of assumptions. And which might be the right one. Mm. I mean, so if you have heard about such things happening, you will be prepared somehow. Uh, if if it catches you by surprise, you have to learn fast. Yeah. But, but I can totally uh, relate to that reaching the the decision maker is the hardest thing mm. so you have to um, how would you approach it you, you're you're like the, the the senior account manager and let's say you get to consult a company like us but uh, eight years back or mm, five mm, years mm, back mm. what would you say like it's the most important thing and how would you approach it well you found it uh, from what I heard, but uh, I, I can hard repeat. Way, yeah. yeah, no, I can repeat what you, what you what you've said, mm. just picking the different parts of what you said. Mm. So the first thing is to understand what's the value. All right, who? What's the driver of each person? Mm. Your peer uh, having uh, the the driver to deliver good quality. He's mm. a technical. Or he or she is a technical mm. guy, so he understands. I don't know why I assumed it's he, but anyway. Or she. So yeah, the person assumes that uh, uh, the, uh, the the person understands what you do, mm. why you do it, likes it. But at the end of the day, this person is not very well positioned mm. Mm. in mm. their own company. Yeah. Because, for example, they're slow, or they are over promising. All right. Or they're, for some reason, not very likable to the top management. And this vision mm. of them transfers to, to you to automatically. All right. And yeah. if, if this person is not well positioned in the, comp in the corporation mm. where uh, she or he mm. works, the opinion about them transfers to you directly. And working in this situation... It's nice when when this person is mm. well. Uh, As well positioned. Yeah, well positioned. Uh, it's good. And then, even then, if it is well, if if he or she is well positioned, you have to think about what are the goals of the levels above this person, because if you meet those goals, mm. then you're way better off. Yeah. And this is this is what we do very often trying to so to a working a, a working meeting with with one of the, uh, the managers that is responsible for a particular team or client mm. is very interesting uh, we have regular meetings and it might be that there is one particular meeting dedicated on thinking just thinking mm. we mm. don't do anything but thinking what would it be what might be might what might it be mm. or <laughs> so just thinking how to approach a level above, okay. how to influence the decision, why this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I have to say the hardest thing in this 
kind of conversation or mental exercise is removing the emotion, removing the, right. the ego, because you have to see the, the, the mm -hmm. markers that, that have come to you in the past and recognize the patterns, you know, to evaluate where you are. So, okay, so you're saying you, you should never leave this to, to, to chance because if the person that you're talking to has some kind of uh, 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 like a neg is perceived negatively, this will automatically transfer to you no matter what you do. And you have to be quite diligent and figure out how to broaden your reach without actually circumventing this person, but also getting to the, the to, to the actual decision makers if you're not talking with them. Whenever on a daily it's possible. Basis. Yeah. It's possible. yeah. You say you don't have to leave it to chance. It's, it's a chance. So you have to make it better. All right. You have if to increase your chance. If yeah. you can. Because <clears throat> there are managers from, from the customer part uh, uh, who are very protective. Mm. They want to hold all the, the, the cards so mm. that they don't let you up. So by working with those people, you have to understand what are the, you can. Mm. Let's, let's get away of have to, because have to is nice, but nice to have. So you, you, you might be in a position to understand what are the goals of their bosses, mm. because they're complaining, they're, they're, they're human beings. Yeah. They're complaining, they're sharing. So if, if you listen enough, and if you listen carefully, and you, if you listen unemotionally, mm. you can mark down very, very, very many things. Okay, you start observing, and potentially, I, I believe this is where removing the emotion can help you, at least from from how I understand it. Because, again, back to back to our story, when we were first doing this, we were quite emotional, and there were a lot it's of normal. negative normal. emotions because we were actually working more than expected and the software development work was great when we were having results the clients were the clients of the client were uh, they, they were happy they, they were using the software and that's why it was like hey but we are doing a great job why, why are why are you treating us like this and why are we going through this right now when everything is going according according to plan and we had quite a lot of emotions back then and this actually uh it, it did not help us to be oh. honest, it, it didn't help us at all because every meeting that we had, we were coming out quite uh, assertive and aggressive because we had neg negative emotions mm -hmm. on our end and the client was, why? Why are you doing that? Yeah. So it was a spiral of, yep. yeah. Yeah. Well, well, this is, this is the biggest challenge mm. in, in all the, in my opinion, in the management job, uh, not being offended not being angry mm. or not showing it and not being um, protective or, or not being whatever is the most hard thing, mm. the hardest thing in life in general. Yeah. So, so should, it, should, should it be, should it be like suppressing emotions or should it be channeling emotions uh, in different ways that are not hindering the relationship? Well, I can, I can speak only for myself. Of course. Of course. Yeah. We're, we're all so, speaking for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. So, I get angry, mm. but I try to understand why I'm angry. Or I get uh, offended, mm. but I'm trying to understand why I'm offended. Yeah. And if if I dig enough, I manage to make it very fast in my, in mm. my soul because I've I've been training this for a long time. But if you manage to do it fast, uh, y you'll understand what what's the what's triggering what this or that is triggering right, yeah. in you. Yeah. And then you'll be able to work accordingly. Mm, mm. So, but the uh, one secret that I understood recently, no, not a secret, but something that we don't think about is that we try to, we start when we don't like someone mm. or someone is making something bad. Uh, what were the names? What were the names that you were calling to those guys? That's that's an interesting topic, uh, and uh, we were we were discussing this before. Uh, we 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 almost always have inner names like uh, internal company. Uh, what was what's the, what's the word for it? Nicknames, slangs, internal okay. company slang for all of our clients. 
And that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. But so what, this, no, no. I mean, how how um, so did your attitude towards the same people, the people itself, mm. change? For sure, but uh, our attitude changed to the folks we we never met. Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. But it changed, of course. It was negative. Yeah. It was negative. And and what I found out is that when people start calling names mm. or change, dehumanize the person, mm. then uh, the, the the glass is full. All right. All right. Yeah. Because like a self fulfilling prophecy when you when you yeah get kind there. of kind yeah. of but when you start calling them those stupid guys mm. okay. or something like that when they they start losing their names mm. and their personality they are the enemy mm. and this is yep. this is known from <laughs> most of the uh, mm, how to say mm, propaganda mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the enemy doesn't have human face yeah and when when we make it naturally and start to start turning people into yeah. animals yeah, 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 yeah. whatever then then we're losing the battle with the, uh, the battle with the emotions in in ourselves yeah and effectively the relationship starts to eroding, deteriorate. deteriorating yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no matter what you're trying to do if this is what you want to do mm. that's fine mm. if it, if this is not what you want to do you fine. have work to do yeah it's not fine yeah and if if you catch yourself uh, going down this road of dehumanizing your you know, like you have a you have an issue with someone what would your suggestion be like uh, my 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 number one thing uh, action point would be meet in person get get in get in a room start talking go have True. go go drink beers or whatever do do some activity do some human activities together so you can start talking in a more human way and figure out what both parties want, if possible. Well, I've seen this not working. Okay. Uh, Happy to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the thing is that when you go out with people, you are developing this outside of work relationship and you start to see this person in a, in a, in different role yeah which uh, could be fine but which doesn't necessarily mean that you start thinking that this person is good professional or something like that so you might like it very much mm. like a friend or somebody to sit on a table but still doesn't bring any anything positive into your work relationship but it can make it easy to discuss work matters true, true. True. When you are on better human grounds with that person. If you know what you want. Okay. The thing is that you have to know what you want out of this relationship. And this might not be the ideal project. This might not be the ideal two years of your life because of the working with someone who is not at your level. Mm. Or you have to drag him or drag her in, in your path towards the success of the project. So it might be not ideal situation and still you want to do it. Mm. And the thing is that there is no big chance that you like this person, mm. but you'll be with this person in, in, in the, on the ship for two uh, years. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to bear with these people yeah. and you have to understand what triggers you. Okay. Why are you mad? Because it's not fair that you're doing 90% of the job or it's not fair that he or she gets the the medals mm. or it is usually it's not fair yeah it's somehow it's, not yeah. fair yeah. Uh, and the thing is that you have to think at least i do mm. does this really matter for me does this defines me as a person as a specialist or as a professional does this matter for my colleagues, for my family, for my mm. boss? And if most of the questions return no, yeah. that's a Boolean one. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. It's, it's quite simple. But you have to think, not to feel. 
So two, two, two good takeaways for me so far. You, you have to know, you need to know what you want out of a relationship with a certain client. What, what do you want to achieve? Or at least, at least have some good idea. And then you need to know what actually triggers you to go into some kind of a conflict because conflict is unavoidable, but mm -hmm. you, you need to know what will trigger you to go into conflict when there is no need for a conflict, conflict. or at least should, a conflict should not be the automatic thing that you do because something has triggered you. And from experience, the thing that right now, before a lot of things were triggering me, uh, but right now is if a client treats our uh, our people bad, like talks down to them, screams at them, we, we, we had such clients, or if something bad happens to someone on the team and this mm. someone on the team has not provoked it in any other way, mm. this is like an automatic trigger for me and I step in. That's okay. Yeah. and You have to do it. And then, then, then we have a conflict that we need to somehow resolve. Uh, but just just uh, thinking from thinking from not nothing else like actually triggers I think what else will trigger so well as a software developer and okay. team lead I'm extremely pragmatic I like to take like pragmatic decisions and sometimes clients and people in general are not taking pragmatic decisions for example mm -hmm. the designer wants to change the whole design like three times a month for example mm -hmm. that that is pissing everyone off in the dev team because they need to refactor mm -hmm. and change everything right and that's the point where they the, the designer is not a designer anymore it's someone with a funky name for example the i don't know the the idiots that changing the design every, that's, every that's, week that's right? the moment yeah mm -hmm, exactly and and that really when sarcasm comes mm -hmm, then exactly. it's time to go in yeah cause surprise surprise you're changing the design the whole design again mm. this and, idiot uh oh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh this was a pretty common thing um like having someone taking for us unpragmatic decisions mm -hmm. and i think that's the point where we realize okay we probably did a bad job um describing why for us this is unpragmatic probably this person doesn't really know how, how complex it is to change that, the whole that, design that's true that's true probably probably it's on us it's it, it, it's probably not on them or, or uh. this this is the way i like to think and the way i like to think hey how can we prevent this next time i can agree if we twist a little bit okay that it's not our fault but it is in our ability to change yes Okay. Exactly, exactly. Another example is, for example, we are working with a client. Everything's working great. Client, the person that we are working is really happy, like the mm. product owner or the product manager or whoever. And then the management just decides to add one more dev team from another company and, okay. and, and join the two teams just in case we, we, we disappear or something. Yeah. Which to us seems really unpragmatic because now we have to deal with another developers that are not part of our company and there might be a cultural unfit or something. Mm -hmm. This this is not pragmatic. We are doing good, but but probably we did a bad job describing that we are a solid company of a lot of people and we might not disappear soon. Mm -hmm. And we we didn't make the effort to meet the actual decision makings and decision makers and show them that we we are a solid company that uh, yeah. is, is is here to stay. Uh, probably is on our field, not not just unpragmatic people that are taking bad decisions. Well, it's it's very hard to be <coughs> to put yourself in in the shoes of someone who you don't know. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so there's one thing: hard to be in someone's shoes that someone that you don't know. And the second thing is that if you don't know this person and if you don't know what he or she's working as well, yeah. it's even harder. Mm -hmm. I mean, I may imagine uh, going into the shoes of someone who is uh, outgoing and mm. very bright personality mm -hmm. or someone grim or someone who is uh, uh, in, I don't know, somehow difficult. Mm. So emotionally, as a chapter, I can imagine what could be in someone's shoes. But for being in the shoes of investor, mm. right. for being in the shoes of a doctor, for being in the shoes of director in a political organization, yeah. All right. I don't know. Mm. I can only assume. And as as hard as you can try and as much as you try, I, I think you become better. Mm. For example, the, the case you said, imagine that 
they don't want to be dependent. Mm -hmm. but, you know, so how many uh, um, internet providers do you have in this office? Two. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because you want we, we don't want to be dependent on exactly. just one. Exactly. Yeah. So this is the same with the teams. Mm. So if you have only one provider, you are dependent from their mood, yeah. their goals. Mm -hmm. So at some point, they don't know. If someone comes and offers you 32 millions for doing uh, something for the NASA, yeah. Yeah. some sexy thing, they don't know. Yeah. So I would, I would understand their behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And understanding their behavior doesn't necessarily mean that I like it. Mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that I... Mm, approve it but absolutely means that i can react according okay. because right. it won't get I, I will not go there <clears throat> and say mm, but we're doing good and why do you change us or is this uh, so we will have problems this will be slow and trying to convince them not yeah. to do it mm -hmm. and i'll i'll know from from my realization that they will do it mm, mm. no matter if i like it or not yeah no so the right, the, yeah. i have two options to, to be angry at them and to tell them or say okay i understand why you do it let me help you with that what mm -hmm. kind of a team do you want mm -hmm. let me find the people for you let me interview them so i can find the right people for the second theme yeah so i'll have a little bit of more control Mm -hmm. So let me organize the work in a way that it is evenly split. Mm. So they can be fast and we can be fast and you can achieve more with this. You are having, you are paying the money anyway. So let's make it two plus two equals five, right. but not the other way around because we will have clashes and this is quite understandable. So let me, let me lead a little bit this process until we are separated. Then you have more control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right then you can influence the stuff. But you have to slow that you're offended, that you're not good, yeah. because they're doing it because of some personal reason. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Just business. Sorry. It is. Ah, oh, this just... <laughs> I that, that triggers you. <laughs> yeah, this, this triggers me a lot when, when I heard this is just business. And um, I, I think right now I understand the reasons why clients do this and it's about risk management and it's nothing personal no it, it, it could be awful let me tell you a story so all right we're doing a great job mm. and we're working a long time with these guys mm. and those guys are came to, to us to say so by contract we have some time that they will notify mm. us that and they come and came and said we're not going to work together and i said why is it is it bad something mm. no the management starts to getting rid of all the uh, providers because mm. we're going to s sell so we're selling the company and nothing you can do exactly uh, but the point is how 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 can you uh, accept this news because it makes a lot of rush mm. you have to find another customer yeah. and you have to train these people to different technology probably i don't know and if you're an investor this does totally make sense mm. Mm. <laughs> if you're if you're someone who is in the organization that your daily life will change that's pain yeah y you know that the, the commitment and the involvement uh, the ham and eggs mm. the dish so the chicken and the, the pig so different level of commitment mm -hmm. yeah the, the chicken is involved but the pig is very much committed yeah so depends on which part you are if you're delivering the eggs only mm. yeah if you have to deliver the ham so it's different thing so this is this is really part of the this is just business. Mm. Uh, this is what I put in this phrase, just business. For some people, they're not emotionally attached. Yeah. And they are, they, their income doesn't depend on this. Mm. And it's, For it's, them it's, it's a game. Business, yeah. It's a game yeah. of, of money, of 
numbers of whatever. Yeah. For a lot, many others, that's not the same case. Yeah. And I, uh, this is this is this is, this also happened to us. Uh, like, I mean, some of the investors made a decision that uh, all contractors, providers, and so on need to go, and we were. We basically built the company, uh, the software of the company, mm -hmm. and um, made it made it work. We were there through changes of CEO, CDOs, engineers. Like we were the only constant factor. Yeah, the and, pillar. I, and then I'm suddenly, playing this role hey, all the time. you just go. That's it. Just business. And yeah, they don't know anything about the history. Yeah. And yeah, and there are a lot of people who fuss and turn. And why they're here from two months? They don't mm -hmm. know nothing. Well, this is perfect opportunity to tell them the story and be there trusted chronologic mm. you know, what would be the word uh, the person who does the chronology whatever yeah yeah writes the, the history the, the, the historian mm -hmm. like the historian the chronicler yeah, yeah the chronicler nice. wow. so, yeah <laughs> which might be very trusted if they're in a rush they don't care, they don't care yeah. about who you are and you have to accept it and try to do the best out of it mm. and and just just that's, be that's be, the, be be on, in in on the reality side mm. of the things not not trying to twist the the reality so you start to feel mm. All right. so if if we have to summarize uh, the thing so far in Bulgaria we are mostly service oriented for historical reasons and when you are a service company even when you are acting as tier one which is mm. the best place that you can be and we are trying to get there uh sometimes the, the the nature of the game is there are going to be decisions made and no matter how good job you're doing and how good you're managing the relationship with the clients mm -hmm. and meeting in person and do, and walking all the extra miles that you need to walk sometimes it's just business it's a numbers game and uh being a service provider you are going to be treated as hey this is we we can get rid of those uh, guys and girls and or we can scale down or we can change or it's risk management and numbers game and we have to, you kind of have to accept it it's no or no no never never accept it no, no. so but try to mitigate it or that's true that's, that's true yeah. but i'm not big fan of mm, well it, life is it is what it is mm. okay then then you're leading nobody to nowhere so i <laughs> there is a very nice uh, phrase i like from from the fountain the, the book fountain mm. Mm. and uh, in the prologue uh the the, the author says I don't want to leave the world to people I hate. So no, it's it's my world as well. So I'll fight for it. And when you understand the need of the person, mm. you're able to work with that. All right. All right. You might want or want will not willing to fulfill that or work together in this particular project with this person with this particular goal, mm. but knowing it at least gives you understanding yeah. where they want to be so if if their path is your path as well cool right. if if it is not cool again mm -hmm. yeah but you know or at least can make some actions towards yeah. to be you know what i say about a diplomacy that it's saying good dog good dog until you find a bigger rock <laughs> so, so, so you have to bear some time in order to do what you want mm. uh but doing with dignity and responsibly so you don't leave people that you don't want to work in in a bad place so yep. you have a deal done you shook hands and that's it and you leave them in a better situation where they were before meeting you and this is always working well this might not be the long term project you want yeah this is also fine but w w uh, where did we start 
So I was tr I was trying to like summarize uh, this part of the reality mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. yeah, working yeah. with clients being a service provider that sometimes yep. is just going to be just business end. N no. And I said accept it. Yeah. You said no. no, 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 no mitigate no. it. Yeah. It, it it will never be business. Mm. It will never be business. This is a very nice uh, word expression to say. I don't want to explain myself. So mm. Just business means I don't want, I want to explain to myself. Yeah, yeah. I, or I'm afraid that if I tell you the real reasons, mm. Things will we get might back, yeah. not be friends anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and this happens. Uh, so if you put people on ease to be able to tell you whatever is in their uh, mind, mm. uh, it, it could go easier. But you have to to get rid of a lot of your ego yeah. in order to be able to, to make it work. And the second thing is that, for example, some investor says that they want to minimize the, the cost mm. because they want to have someone from their circle yeah. taking the job, which is... We've had this experience. Well, this <laughs> is so, so natural. Mm -hmm. We all do it. Mm. The whole world does it. To put your man in charge. We have a beautiful word in Bulgarian about yeah, this. I have a man. <laughs> <laughs> I have a man, yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah but that's yeah. it. Uh, yeah. All our uh, foreign watchers and listeners try yeah. to say Shuruba <laughs> and you can organize some <laughs> giveaway. We will do a giveaway for everyone who can pronounce Shuruba Not not natively Bulgarian yeah, or not, Serbian not, or yeah. Not from the Balkans. Yeah, not from the Balkans. <laughs> yeah, Greece is next to us, so a Greek might try to say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're pretty well versed in the meaning of this word, but that's a different. Yeah. Uh, different so th this works all the time, mm. and I don't know why people are surprised of seeing it happen. Mm. So. Because they have never seen it happen before and they had a pretty unrealistic... That's us. We had a pretty unrealistic uh, expectations of if we do a good job, then we have a business forever. And yeah. it turned out not to be the case. Yeah, yeah that's that's part of the story. Yeah. But I really like... I, I think this is like a, a, a piece of wisdom. Uh, I tried writing it down, but my pen stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you our... You have it recorded. <laughs> it's not our fault... But it's in our ability to uh, change or to affect change. And I really, really like this. And I'm going to write this down alongside the other bits and pieces of wisdom that I read from time to time. So thank you about this. Sure. Really, Always. Really good. Really good. And yeah, that's basically the nature of uh, having working, working with clients and all the things that people should expect. Um, let's turn the other way around okay. now we we will we will perhaps circle back to to this but we are all assuming that we are doing a perfect job like our yeah. our line of work is there there are no issues with our line of work yet this is also not the reality and sometimes it is our fault we are not doing a perfect job mm -hmm. and the client is is not happy and what would be your approach in those scenarios when it is our fault and you know the team is underperforming or the team is deliberately not doing a good job for reasons so let's let's start from then if someone is sabotaging the thing okay. that that's not good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's not good and it should be removed either the person either the reason yeah so there must be so it's I don't think that it's possible that someone is paying for someone and someone else from mm. the, the provider is actually working yeah. against the, mm -hmm. the common goal. Undermining everything, yeah. Doesn't seem like a Well it happens. Probably. And it can be personal. I've I've seen it. I've seen it not because of the client, but because of inter interpersonal relationships on the team. Probably, I I haven't seen such big problem. Uh, I had situation when it is done unconsciously. Okay. Because this is this is something where you can work through 
understanding. Mm. If if you see it happening unconsciously, this can be addressed by making mm. it visible and understandable. If someone is doing it in purpose, I don't know how I would react, but I probably will get rid of mm. the person. All right. Or the reason. Or the know. reason, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Really, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it very often. I cannot imagine happening. Probably, but the chances are very, very low. Mm. And I don't. I I learned to to live in a way that I don't solve problems that I don't have. Okay. Sure. Okay. So You're not I, actively looking for for problems. Systems. No, I'm not actively <laughs> looking for <laughs> problems. No. That's uh, also that's also part of the of the wisdom. Uh, Maybe perhaps we are a smaller company and we were like a couple of years ago around 20 people. We're 25 mm. now. Mm. Still a small company. Feels pretty big to us. Um, we've seen such cases and scenarios and I can like summarize it into two big groups. First is interpersonal struggles between people on a team. And then the best thing is to separate them on, on different mm -hmm. teams. And <clears throat> because those folks didn't like each other, they were kind of sabotaging the entire team. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something like I've parents seen. Yeah. fighting through the kids. It's it, perhaps yeah. it's a it's a bad analogy, but this is how how I how I think about it. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and the other thing is when someone on the team feels kind of how to say um, sur suppressed or. Mm -hmm. uh, Thinks that the client doesn't like him or her, and uh, it turn it, it goes into malicious obedience. This this beautiful phrase when you do just the work that you've been told to do and nothing else. Yeah, I'm professional. <laughs> that's that's usually the case. I'm professional. Yeah. I'm not doing what. Yeah. Anything more. So, <clears throat> the first thing, I like to solve all the problems or or the all the fights. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the level, inter team or with the customer you said mm. fighting with the customer about something so i i honestly ask what is your goal what do you want to achieve why do you do that uh, usually one of the answers of any of those three shows where we have to dig more mm. and once you understand i have to refer to some 10 years 10 minutes back in the conversation you decide what you want to do with this information hmm. as you said conversation but this conversation usually goes with well it's it's not ideal yeah. obviously let's find out why and what what do you want to achieve and usually 90% of the time you understand that someone is doing something because he or she wants to achieve something mm. and most of the time when you're willing to work with this pe person mm. uh, most of the time you understand that he or she wants the same thing just approaching it differently yeah and sometimes you give him or her credit but tell him okay i don't think agree with you but i'll let you do it and i'll try to help you evaluate your idea mm. but if this doesn't happen you'll try my way and Yep. If you had enough time, you may pull it for a longer period. And I if it could be mm. days. I mean, today we try it that way. Tomorrow we try it that way. Especially if it is some something in we are arguing about development. Oh, it oh, could be hours. There. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, if we're talking about processes, we might need a little bit longer. Mm. Uh, but still, when people understand that you want to go there as well, then you have found a common mm, ground. Mm. So if you meet somewhere for some reason, yeah. whether it is a type of beer you drink or uh, the, the, the time you like to meet, mm. uh, late or evening, or just because you like particular language mm. or are a fan of similar football team I don't yeah. know mm -hmm. whenever you find something to touch could be professional yeah. you can start building on that yeah. if you wish if all parties want yeah yeah right but common goal usually is something that brings people together yeah. and what was the second part 
uh, malicious obedience. Uh, but this this is so. Just to summarize, and I really like how, how you phrased the the uh, the first thing about interpersonal or some kind of struggles between folks within the company, and that's why. Um, I believe in hybrid with in-person element because you can start building common ground easily yeah. when people are meeting again in person because otherwise people tend to be quite more aggressive when they're behind keyboard or camera and not as aggressive or not as assertive or not as like pain in the ass uh, when they are in person. And that's that's why sometimes you need to bring people together and talk about those things. Mm -hmm. But in my in my opinion... At least my experience is that you're aggressive behind keyboard and monitor. Yeah. If you're behind camera, not that much. People turn off their cameras. No, no, no. I, that's that's yeah, what I mean. That's okay. If the camera is on, of everyone, mm. that's a different, different, different conversation. Always different. Yeah. And I have no problem uh, speaking in on camera with the shirt and mm. underwear <laughs> below mm -hmm. so that's, that's fine, fine. <laughs> yeah <clears throat> and and the other thing i think we can make a break after uh -huh. after we discuss so uh the, the thing with malicious obedience i i've seen it and people are doing it not because they want to sabotage but what do you mean so when you put someone to uh in, in charge of a team like to lead a team and uh, this person uh, does not have a lot of experience in working with clients and all the things that we discussed right. in the first part. They can start taking it very, very personally. And usually two things happen. They become pass passively aggressive towards the client and also develop this malicious obedience, which is I told exactly what, what you want I, I did exactly what you wanted me to do why are you why are you asking those questions are you not trusting me like this is i've seen this with every single person that rose to a leadership role and we have our internal ways of working things and discussing and we have our internal program but almost always it happens because some somehow you feel attacked by the client and the expectations of the client and it's usually because exactly those expectations are not managed at all well this usually happens when uh individual contributors becomes yeah a manager of a group yeah and when you stop being able to do the whole work on your own then this mind shift is enormously difficult mm -hmm. And if you're not wired that way, it might be impossible. Mm. So this is so usually I've been asked, does everybody becomes is capable of being manager and leader? And the answer is no. Uh, so it, it's it's very you nice can to learn, be yes. You can learn some of the traits, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, but going from, from inside of you, it's just you have to be certainly mm. in a certain way wired towards people uh, it also doesn't mean that this is for everyone yeah. and doesn't mean that everyone likes it and hopefully lately I see that not everybody believes this is improvement of your career mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because this is the common fallacy yeah I become better and better and better then because then I become some kind of a boss mm. and <laughs> people start realizing that this is not a great career path this is not what my grandma in the village mm. will think mm. of progression, which is good because they're very capable people who doesn't want to go in this, um, how to say, so the society expects you to become... Uh, in, Especially in, here in yeah. Yeah, the, Europe. the bigger yeah. rank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you start feeling unhappy and happy and happy. And mm. Why is that? Uh, and very capable people are, how to say, burning their, yep, their own, Energy. With that, yeah, instead of being different things, and and that we have to talk about leadership, but yep. position of authority is something that I don't trust working, mm. Mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't practice it, I don't like it, mm. I don't, I wouldn't encourage everyone to, to go. From and by, by position of authority, you mean I say something and I expect you to do it, not because you believe in what I say or we are aligned, but because I have the authority to tell because you. Because I to said do. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. This is, 
uh, already promised we will record. We an started entire, already, as yeah. you can see. We will record it bit... because it touches. It touches the at least at least from from my point of view, it touches the relationship with the client because uh, we, we we take pride in uh, the way we develop our leaders. We figured it out over the years, and we've just seen that if you put someone in such position without proper support and training and expectation management and over communication, sure. it's malicious obedience, passive aggressiveness. Sometimes. Sometimes if the person is more assertive, like a, a big guy uh, with a lot of testosterone uh, inside of him, not passive uh, uh, aggressive, but rather active aggressive, active aggressive. <laughs> which is which is not great. But we will um, get to leadership at some point, and I think we can take a break. Yeah, right good. now. All right, good, Teddy. Break. According to the YouTube analytics, huge percentage of you are not subscribed to our channel. So if you like our content, please subscribe. We are aiming at 2,500 subscribers, and at the point we reach them, we are going to do a giveaway. We still don't know what we are going to give away, but if you have any good suggestions, please put them in the comments below. We are back from the break. We are still here, a bit refreshed, and uh, we will continue talking about the art of managing the relationship with your clients. Uh, we decided to go in the direction of uh, talking about di diplomacy and... Uh, going through some some scenarios uh, of things that happened to us that are going to be valuable for the discussion. And just to open, uh, what I learned for all those years that we've been doing this is that diplomacy is really, really important when, and yes. as Sabi talked, uh, you should kind of get, get rid of emotions. Uh, at, least, at least this is in my hat. When I, when I say diplomacy, I, I think about, okay, I should approach this without any emotions and just figure out what the client wants, what do we want, uh, what are the problems and how we can solve them and how we can move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, completely, it's not always completely without emotion, but with reduced emotion because otherwise, as we discussed in the first half of, uh, of this podcast, uh, it can um, prevent you from making good judgments. And when it's hard right now for me to be diplomatic, for example, one of the scenarios that I want to discuss is when the client is extremely toxic towards, not me, mm. I learned not to care, but towards the team, towards the people of our team. And we, we talked about that we are quite protective and sometimes mm. overprotective of our people. And what really triggers me and when, when I'm ready to jump jump in and fight <laughs> is when someone treats uh, our folks bad and like uh, talks down to them, screams to them. We, we had several mm -hmm. occasions of this. And I would like to hear your opinion and let's start dissecting this particular yeah. topic. If you allow me for the diplomacy, to put two yeah. points I heard, the diplomacy, there are two things in my mind. Mm. Uh, one is when we both together like each other, but for some reason, something didn't work temporarily. And the other reason is that we have, we are forced to be together mm. uh, and through circumstances. For example, if you go through negotiation with the procurement mm. for the software, for thing that those procurement guys do not understand anything, yeah. that's a very interesting, <laughs> interesting place and there my best advice would be just to be prepared with some things that you want to give and some things that you have to achieve so it is like a bargain on mm. the market mm. right. apples 5 lever no 3 lever yeah. because of 5 kilos it's that yeah. kind of a negotiation so those are the negotiations yeah. we like each other we want to work together and we want we have a common goal yeah. or we are forced to be together and we have to be together in order to to get away of you and be with someone else. So, uh, and and back to the to what you said, if someone is <clears throat> toxic customer, yeah, for a lack of a better word, yeah. Uh, so I don't know how many of you and you mm -hmm. are parents, but I can I can get a lot of abuse. But if someone does something to my kid or my guys mm. then the fury comes out yes yeah and the biggest so we always interfere as mm. managers 
and that's that's why it said um, escalation mm. mm -hmm. right so it comes to our mind then you have to be very careful because both sides are very emotional mm. if there is already a, a hot fight yeah it's it's burning and if you try to stay a little bit above the situation, which is not always possible because you're already triggered, mm. uh, then can good. Uh, you may be in the role of someone who brings the peace, mm. the peacemaker. Because if you join one of the parties, not, no, not helping yeah. at all. No, not <laughs> helping at all, yeah. So you have to think of yourself for returning the peace. Uh, so this this helps to understand both sides mm -hmm. because as as we discussed before the break that we have to find common break. Mm. So what what I did in the last example that we had that people are fighting on both sides, uh, we just changed the goal of the people in our organization mm -hmm. because people on the other side changed and right. the goals changed. And we still lived with uh, the old goal of mm. delivering best quality. Uh, the new goal was just being faster and on paper everything should work. Mm. And they wanted to change the process to bring more people. Mm -hmm. So our goal should change. So it's not the same. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we work and we talk and we work and we talk both sides and until now it's a little bit calmer uh, still a little bit tension but just you realize that yeah. the reality is different uh, and and one of the hardest things to do just 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 want to say yeah, this sure. realize that there needs to be like reality is different and you need to change really hard we yeah, yeah. nobody wants to change mm. Nobody likes to change. Nobody likes to, to realize that he or she might not be right. Mm. Oh, yeah. Especially because the world changes. And what was true yesterday is not true today. So the, sa the same thing, that's, that's very funny. I, I would say funny. There are people, so if, if you look at all the conversation in the office, outside of the office mm. so you can see how how loaded the conversation yeah. is and the truth is that the world is changed so this conversation doesn't matter <clears throat> if you go to the extremes mm. and so here's the same if, if you try to get out of because when when people are fighting each other they usually go to the extreme mm -hmm. yeah. little by little little by little little by little and this is not, not not productive not, no not there is no big chance mm. to meet somewhere because you're going to the edge of the yeah. the circle uh and this is this is what happens usually you bring someone who tries to be in a position of both mm. sides and try to to bring them a little bit together and the second part of this thing is that that's our fault our own fault uh, you mentioned it. Managers in Bulgaria are too protective for the people, yeah. and yeah. we don't leave the people to deal with the uh, with the problems of the real world because we are afraid of not losing them. We're afraid to um, to give bigger problems to people who are not trained. Mm. But the reality is that people are very capable of managing majority of the stuff. Yeah. And <clears throat> so it depends on the reason. If you want to care about your people, that's good. The question is, do you really care for them by putting in uh, a golden cage yeah. around them? And, and, and the second thing is that, do we really believe that we can handle the situation better? Are we better human beings mm -hmm. or I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So just because it happened to be that we're in some managerial role doesn't make me better or more capable. 
for sure I don't know enough. I, I, I know less for the particular mm -hmm. case than the person who is in the trenches on the front line. Yeah. So probably if, if this fallacy uh, that I'm more capable of dealing with these things uh, can be removed out of the equation and just support the person could be easily solvable. So uh, I would say uh, we are definitely guilty of being overprotective. We, yeah. we, we really care about our, our folks and not always this has been the best the best way forward. And for example, at times when we had really, really toxic clients and we couldn't salvage the situation, we were, uh, hey, we have a contract, we are giving you our notice. We will finish what we started and goodbye. We, it's just there's no use of us continuing working together. But it's really hard to do this when uh, the client is is key currently to you, to, to your uh, well being mm -hmm. as a company, mm -hmm. and you can't just get rid of the client because then you need to get also get rid of the people which you don't want to do. You mm -hmm. want to protect them. And what we learned so far is that it's good to be protective, yet you need to let people figure some things on their own with the proper support. They need to know they you have their back mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they need to know they have the not only agency, but the mandate, uh, I will use this right. word, uh, in order to fend for themselves and to try to um, fix the relationship or turn around a toxic client and make him more productive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, towards, towards the common goal. Those were... When you are overprotective, and if you if you decide, or oh, I'm not going to be overprotective, I'm going to let them handle it, but you don't give the agency and the mandate, it's at least from our experience, it's not going to work. You need to have their back. Yeah, because I feel that we we became very uh, how to say broad mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I I may share what what I do with with. I'm currently working with uh, team leads uh, and sometimes with, with key people who are doing mm. particular things. But we do always the same thing. There is a problem and there is a question. Do you want to handle it or you want me to do what? Mm. So they use me as a resource. I'm putting myself in their uh, good decision. What should I do? As figure of mm. of authority because i can go and 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 work with some of the managers of the companies who understand that my rank is big so i'm some kind of a uh, authority authority yeah. yeah and so i can i give in the hands of my people the leverage mm. to use me as a tool mm -hmm. in a situation where they feel appropriate Mm. And what happens usually is that they realize that the first they can do it, and the second thing is they they somehow say, "Well, I'll do it myself. I'll deal with that." And the third thing sometimes that we do is, most of the time, first we we cure the the wounds mm. of, of the immediate interaction, and I declare that. What happens there doesn't mean that this changes mm -hmm. my attitude towards them. And the second thing that, and I'm very honest with that. And the second thing is that um, thinking of what we want to achieve. And if we're not going with our current behavior there, what are we causing? What are the consequences? Because if I'm angry, and slap someone in the face, I usually don't think about the consequences. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I slap the neighbor, the consequences would be yeah. some consequences. <laughs> if I slap the prime minister, there would be a different consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do you realize the consequences of this particular case and this particular behavior? And sometimes it's fine mm. to, to show anger, to yeah. Sometimes you want to be angry because this makes some benefit. Yeah. This may show the client that hey, uh, I'm getting pushed back. So could I, be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I think, this is a valid too, given that you understand the consequences. 
that sometimes if you show anger or you, you push back or you draw some lines, uh, at, at least from, from our perspective, the, the, the consequences, you should be ready to lose the client. If you are not ready to lose the client, it's really hard to... I don't think, I don't think that right. we have to put this into the extreme. Okay. Because most of the time, it's not that, how to say... Uh, that bad? No, or? no, no. Uh, it, it's not apocalyptic whether no. we, right. we lose the client or not. On a daily basis, we draw lines mm. every day. So I have certain people which I'm dealing with, uh, and I found out that it's more efficient for me mm. if I'm a little bit angry and I go there okay. and I show I'm angry and I'm not happy about what's happening and okay. things go fast. Okay. <laughs> Works. So I'm not mm. a lot angry. I I'm not very much angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just showing that I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So it works well. Why should I change my behavior? We, after all, work, work with this person very nice. Mm. To sometimes comes back, I give the favor, I do the favor. But when I need something fast, I need to be angry. Okay. <laughs> Nothing dramatic. Yeah. But it works better. So sometimes I I decide that it works better if I try to help this person instead of drawing the line. Mm. So somebody is trying to make <clears throat> something against the the rule to, 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 to shorten the testing period of a mm, release. Okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is very critical <coughs> release. And I say, okay, but next time it won't be the case. And he says yes. And next time he tries to do the same. And he said, and you say no. Mm. Because we spoke previous time. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And then you, you show some resistance. So it's negotiation all the oh, time. Yes. And trying to dissect what you did what you said is sometimes you can you can be uh, tired of it mm. but once in a while probably you may consider relationship with this person uh, do we do we do we understand each other well are we having common understanding of what's right or wrong so yeah. do we do we need to tune a little bit mm. how can i tune it and this usually prevents big clashes if somebody new comes and doesn't fit the culture, no matter which side, yeah. uh, then might be bigger clashes and then you might be more angry. I don't know. You said you're a small organization. So a lot of people, behaviors, behavior of the people might impact the, 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 the relationship with the customer. Yeah. But if, if we are talking in my expertise, big customers, big corporations, <laughs> Yeah. What happens in the team doesn't really matter mm. what's going on because the deals are done in the golf field. Yeah. So then the best approach would be just to, to keep the team in a good shape and people nice and calm both sides. So there is no, um, how to say, everyday tension. Yeah. I really like your idea of providing yourself as a tool to people that that's, you work with that's always not for this this not for this occasion only mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i'm i like to think of myself that i'm working for my people okay because they 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 know what to do they know how to do it and usually i just have to remove some obstacle because you work with the same kind of people they're clever they're professional and need just a little bit of guidance where the goal is because you have some side conversation with the big boss. But out of that... Yeah, yeah and and um, that really triggers the people to, to lead the whole thing and reach to you whenever there is something that they need, to, mm -hmm. they need help with. However, I've seen this putting a lot of stress to people and they are thinking that if they reach you that they failed mm. and they, they they avoid reaching the for example you uh, until the last possible moment and that puts a lot of stress on on such people sometimes happen so that's why the people who you work with on this occasion that's what i do that's only my experience i usually monitor very closely 
and ask what's going on, try to feel if this person is somehow having difficulties to solve this. Mm -hmm. and, and by just talking, you can understand where the difficulty is. And you offer again, you want to help. I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. Sometimes they don't realize what you can do for them. And you offer uh, plenty of possibilities so they can choose. Yeah. And you're right, uh, people do it for different reasons. Some want to prove themselves that, that they're worthy and mm -hmm. that's why I'm trying. Uh, sometimes they don't want to show weakness mm -hmm. in your eyes, that's exactly. why they're trying. That they are trying. So, I don't know, this is, isn't it for the next episode? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we, we can get there. Uh, we can spoke about that. It's I, your choice. I, I think it's still it's still towards client relationship because um, if you go down the road where you, you don't want to be overprotective and actually uh, develop those skills in, in your folks, uh, I think right now, I think uh, in terms of escalation management and when, uh, when we have uh, team leads talking with clients, mm -hmm. we want to know that they have our backs and we want to have... That's the first thing, uh, that we have their backs so, so they can reach out to us. Uh, the second thing is we try to be like insanely transparent uh, with what's happening with the client, what are the financial terms, uh, sharing. Uh, if, if I'm co having communication with the client, I'm also sharing it with the team lead, so the team lead is completely aware of what's going on. And this helps a lot. And then the third thing is uh, the have some kind of escalation ladder, meaning, hey, you can handle all of those things and I will step in only if things go, go beyond a certain mm -hmm. level. And sometimes we even say, hey, uh, by the way, if this continues to be like this and we cannot resolve it, then we will consider uh, stopping our work for this for this particular mm -hmm. client. But we cannot do it right now. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 just, we just try to be completely honest because when we are overprotective, we build loyalty. But we want to also build trust because when you are overprotective, people are going to be loyal, but not always. Uh, but they're not always going to be not trusting you. Not necessary, but yeah, most of the time. From, from our experience. Yeah. But when you go the, the, the path where, hey, you can handle this, uh, I have your back and here's all, all the information and expectation needed and uh, here's how to manage expectations, I think this builds better trust and loyalty in the long run and also helps people develop skills that they're going to feel good about. I think so. Yeah. And that's, that's and it is how not, we see it. Yeah. It is never a contract. You do that, I'll do that. It's always a process where this saga is goes for weeks and months. Mm -hmm. And if you're there, no matter your schedule, uh, then people start working and collaborate on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the boundaries between uh, roles and positions start to blur. Mm -hmm. And yes, I can do that, you can do that. It's better if you write this mail, it's better to you to communicate that. So I'll type it to you and you'll send it because we together believe that this is a better approach and this is joint work. It's a team. And if you start doing this early, you will overcome because people have egos, especially men, I would say. And when you step in uh, our, our experience again, we cannot make a general assumption, but when you step in and try to help, as Ivo said, people feel, hey, I, People say, I'm not doing a good job, and that's why someone's stepping in to help me when it mm -hmm. should be rather... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see, I see where, where this com can, come, can come from. Yeah. But if, if you together are building the idea of what needs to be done, then there is that you already spoke about. And so, for example, all the males regarding transparency yeah. uh, with the leads and people who are in, in the leading position are... And are daily in the in the business with this customer, nurturing the relationship. Mm. They always know. Could be with with a day or two uh, uh, later, yeah. because you might want to have additional conversation here and there. But you usually at some point all the information goes down, yeah. and the explanation why you did what you did, and 
when we decide that some communication will be made, for example, I always send the mail to those who can be affected. All right. Affected means that on your meeting tomorrow, there will be the topic. So not not to the whole team, yeah. but to the people that will mm-hmm. be on the first line uh, with this topic. So I always send the mail to the team lead, for example, and say, this is what I'm going to communicate. Tell me if I'm talking nonsense mm-hmm. here and there, mm-hmm. correct where it needs to be corrected, or do you understand that the way we spoke yesterday, because you might be that you're not doing the, the right wording, mm-hmm. and they uh, um, modify what they need or tell you what, what you didn't express well, and then th- when they're happy, then this is the moment when the mail flies. Mm. Before that, I don't send mails. It's very, very, very rare occasion when I send mail to for for negotiations mm-hmm. for for some relationship with the with the customer. If the team lead doesn't know what what's okay. in there, but this this builds trust. If I am the team lead and you do this, I will feel included. Like but there are no things going. You're you're part of the the decision. You're not included. Sometimes you tell me what to do what mm. to write and because i have skills with, with typing and twisting words they tell me i need you to mm. do this and that and send it to the to those people mm. i said okay do you like it does it say what you want does it do you think that the consequence of this mail would be where you want to go yeah okay sometimes i write them mails mm. they tell me i have a lot of work I don't want to go here and there uh, typing mails. Can you type this mail for me? And I do it. Sometimes they type me mail. They have clear vision what what they want to achieve and how want to say it and whom to, to tell it with the exact words that happen in the meeting, mm-hmm. which will ring a bell for something that they have already yeah. talked. Yeah. And they type me a mail and said, can you send this and that, this to these people? Mm-hmm. Because da 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 da. Okay, send. So we are we're working together. Okay. It's not inclusion. It's just. It's a team. That's it's it, a it, This resonates, I believe, with with both of us because mm-hmm. this is what we are doing right now, and we, we see the benefits of it. Uh, uh, for sure, the when you share more of the nitty gritty details of working with clients and the relationship with your team, they will. It will not be as uh, beautiful as you have described it in the beginning to to your mm-hmm. folks, but I think that's that's for that's for the better. The, the thing with the sharing, I learned to share information when the consequences of this share mm. wouldn't be in a way that I don't want. Okay. For example, if something is fixable, and if I share it before I found a solution, then it uh, it puts people in the panic mode. Mm. Why would I do that? But if something is, I need their input to bring the solution together, mm. I cannot take the decision on my own. So, so this is this is really the, the, for me, the level of, should I share something early or later? Mm. It, it's not a question whether I share it. It's when. Okay, it's when. And I, I think this kind of naturally brings us to to the topic and when we when we were having the initial conversation uh, you mentioned something really interesting D- do you have to lie when you're working with mm-hmm. uh, when you're working with clients and managing the relationship with the clients and being a buffer sometimes for the team and helping the team work with with those clients and uh, I really thought about it and for example it's really hard for me to lie internally and that's why we lean towards being quite radically transparent Mm -hmm. sometimes as you mentioned people go into panic mode and you can skip that i agree uh but when it comes to (laughs) talking with clients uh i think it's unwise to speak your mind and then diplomacy should be on a much higher level political speak and talk should be on a much higher level when you are aligned on the goals that Mm -hmm. you want to achieve uh sometimes you may think that this client uh we quite often work with clients that they think they have technical skills. They have like close to zero technical skills, yet they want to be making the decisions. And mm-hmm. you cannot just go there and say, hey, by the way, uh, 
just don't do this because you, you don't understand the topic at all, mm -hmm. but you want to steer the clients with the right questions and the right proposals. So you go towards the direction that will benefit the mm -hmm. entire process and will help you reach the goal. So when it comes to the team, it's really hard for me to lie. Sometimes you may want to omit information, but then when it comes to the clients, I would not say it's lying, but it's rather speaking in a more political and diplomatic mm. terms. And it's not with all clients. There are yeah. clients that we're quite honest and transparent with, but it's not always. Well, lie, let's, let's define lying because okay. yeah. it could be, it could be very misleading, uh, because someone will say, well, but what they said is really a lie. For me, lie means that you change the fact. Mm -hmm. And what we see in our media and all, all over the media. Mm -hmm. So you may share a fact and twist it, the impression of accepting this fact. So mm -hmm. it leads somewhere else. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, probably the famous thing um, with the with the with the si uh, with the six or nine on the sheet. So mm -hmm. two people are looking at the same way, and one says it's a six, the other one says it's nine. Yeah. So the same fact could be seen differently from yeah. two people. So it's not very unusual to say fact and uh, looking it from the yeah. direction yeah. that you like and this is what majority of the startup guys do they mm. twist the reality a reality in a way that is appealing and possible because if you don't see it that way you're doomed mm. yeah so for me lying is changing the facts it is not twisting but changing the facts or yeah. yeah and depends on the on the level of twist mm it could be also accepted as a lie or, or you've been tricked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And if I'm twisting the reality in a way that it will never possibly apply to mm. someone, then I'm lying. So if I'm telling that everybody has a possibility in this modern age to learn anything on YouTube mm. and I'm speaking this in a ghetto where they don't have internet, that's a lie. You're lying. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lie. And <clears throat> so with a customer, I would like to lead them to the place where I go. Mm -hmm. With the people, I usually don't put this effort because this is a lot of effort. Mm. Yeah. It is. Uh, to, to, to bring someone on a path and show him the path in a way that they are willing to go. Mm. Uh, and I always do it for the sake of common success because otherwise I would have problems with my yeah. with myself mm -hmm. with people internally uh, we don't really do it we just explain what it is and and how we see it yeah. could be different so usually when I say something to, to, to my uh, leadership team and there are three people who see it one way the same fact see it one way, the other three the other way, the other three says, well, pff, I cannot see it either mm. way. So if, if the group is bigger, mm. there will be a lot of different opinions yeah. about the same thing. So sharing the facts and sharing my view mm. on them usually works because of the, yeah. as you said, trust. If I prove my, uh, if I have proven myself, to be trustworthy and and how to say mm. and there for and, the people like yeah, being and, there yeah and working for them mm. being their champion in different uh, situations they say okay fine yeah. let's see uh, if you have to lead a customer who is not technically aware of something but want to do a decision usually I may go and describe the consequences of mm. this decision in a more darker colors than yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah what, what we try is to so turn the, the nuance yeah. The, yeah of gray 
Got it. <laughs> Everything is nuanced. <laughs> right. like negotiations are lowered all, on all levels with new with different but nuances. But in time, but in time, if you work with this same person for six months mm. or more, and they start to see that you want to help and bring everybody to the place they want to go, mm. at some point they will say, "Yeah, I would like to say this as a decision, but you know better." Yeah. So this building changes. trust, building yeah. trust with the building, client. Everything is trust. Yeah, everything is trust. And defining and defining trust. I, I had this realization. I had a conversation with a client, and I was I was saying, say, you, you need to trust us more because otherwise we we cannot achieve our common goal. And the client asked, "What's your definition of trust?" And I said, "Well, you need to take a little leap of faith so we can start working." And he said, "Trust for me is you say you're going to do something, and then you're going to do something." which is not necessarily the way that I'm going to define trust, but this gave us the idea of what to do in order to get to a place where uh, we will have the trust that uh, that's our definition of trust. Like, you know your job, just go on mm -hmm. and take take the technical details, no need to agree on every single step and every single decision. But asking the question, uh, or rather being asked the question, uh, made me realize that sometimes when we talk with clients we need to first ask about the definitions of how we see things mm. to, like not not lying but like facts can be um accepted in, in presented, different, presented differently. yeah presented differently yeah. actually it's actually quite helpful because then you can see what works for the client and then you can take steps towards that by also expecting the client to also take like meet, meet somewhere mm -hmm. meet mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle so just just something that I uh, realized. Also, you can challenge them with the fact. Mm. They are giving some proposal or willing to do this or that, and you mm. say, but yeah. the reality is. So they have, they suffer from the same fallacies. Every customer yeah. is a human being. Yeah. And the, the, for me, the, the, the crucial part is when the customer starts to be a customer and you became partners. That's that's the most, the, the biggest, the biggest flip. Yeah. yeah. And it can be ruined by someone going, going out of the organization and someone else comes, yeah. different director, that this is instantly break, uh, broken yeah. and you have to build it again. But the difference between customers and, uh, because I heard that recently, it's very good. The difference between customer and partner, customer is always right. And you do what they say, no matter the consequences. It's always right. Mm. And the partner is the person or the, the, the entity yeah. that steps against you for your common benefit. That's that's really good. That's a great definition. Yeah. yeah. We're going to take. We're going to steal it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not mine. It's really but good. But still, very valid. Okay, that's really good. <laughs> And, and and when you go th at that point, mm. you're more or less safe with the, the conversations, all the problems mm. that are... It gives you a good frame of reference for yeah, how to approach you things. You can fight and you both know that this is for oh, common, goal. common better. Well, thank you for <laughs> dropping so many wisdom bumps, uh, uh, as, as they say. Ah. Oh. Something else really resonated mm -hmm. with me. You said about basically your mm -hmm. your your main goal is to align the goals between the team and, and the client. Mm -hmm. If the goals are misaligned, this is the point where fights start to happen. Well, friction happens. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And as a outsourcing companies, let's say we are often kept in the dark what the main goals of the clients that's a problem, are. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's why the, the the goals are often misaligned. Mm -hmm. So so. Probably one of the main job of the relationship manager is to align the goals, right? Well, usually you don't know it. So they they start to be seen through the everyday work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the team usually knows them before you do. They tell it to you. They tell uh, they tell you what's the reality, because the person you work with usually has assignment mm. to do the job that you do. Yeah. So you're aligned with this peer. And if there's misalignment, it's above the level of your peers. And what 
it could be seen either through your peer who is very well aware and just yeah. sees what's going on and tell you. The question is whether he or she wants to tell you if it is in, in their interest or through the theme because mm -hmm. they see currents in, in the in the in the fabric of yeah development and uh, the currents in the fabric doesn't work but in the <laughs> in the in the in, in the lake in they, the ocean they yeah. have a greater resolution on on, on things like they see yeah. way more things being day to day there yeah yeah and they start to see those patterns and and where the, the things go so they tell you hmm. and if this doesn't suit you you may bring it hmm. if it works for you you may decide not to you may decide to prepare for something hmm. for example recently i i've learned at least i'm going to try that but i put it in in words in short words i like short sentences haiku stuff so if, if if the director that you work with and you like is changed, you may expect that in 12 to, to 18 months that you're replaced as a contractor. So currently this is my expression for three to four examples. And I'm going to test that. Best of luck, uh, this happened to us. <laughs> and have, you, have you seen such thing? Yeah, it happened to us. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm talking about the period. That's the interesting thing. The period was like the, I would not say the shortest possible period, but close to the shortest possible period where the company would not suffer by replacing us. Uh, uh -huh. So we had to... No, no, no. Uh, my, my question was whether it is 12 to 18 months. At, at least in the, if we are talking about something that uh, is a working business and has customers and clients right, 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 right. then at least a year at least a year but then well uh, are you going to go to the second year at least in my opinion if they can the, the moment that they realize they can remove you they will remove you the very yeah. moment yeah you're gone yeah but usually it takes a year it takes a year if we're talking about working business of course mm. if we're talking about a startup that has no customers <laughs> oh, it's they not, disappear uh, on the obviously day obviously the, the job the disappears yeah. All right, I think we are bringing, if Sabi, of course, wants to come back to, to, sure. to Hackcast, we're bringing him back. There are like, plenty of topics that we can discuss. And before, we, we have some uh, closing topics that we uh, discuss in every episode. Uh, but before we get, go there, I want to uh, briefly discuss something that's a bit lighter uh, when it comes to relationships with clients. But we, ha we, we suffer from this. Breakfast? Our... <laughs> <laughs> because we discussed the breakfast and yeah sometimes it's difficult now, now to I'm figure hungry. out now I'm hungry uh, <laughs> clients tend not to pay their invoices on time and we have tried I would say everything except legal actions to make them pay their invoices and if we push too hard we're breaking the relationship and we don't want to break the relationship and I think some of the clients are under, like they figured out this and they just pay the invoice only when I have sent five emails, three Slack messages. And sometimes I call them and send SMS messages. Like this is, I, I, I don't get it. And it's. Accept it. You just have we, to we, accept we it. have accepted it <laughs> okay. and we have developed a, a, an approach for this, but. I don't want to, uh, to lie to you. That's it. It's the reality. <laughs> and with the bigger companies, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. Because someone in the chain forgot to push a button. And right. it, it doesn't work with one mail, two mails, three mails, four mails. Yeah. The SM you don't know whom to call. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who is doing that? Who is doing Who's the wiring? Yeah. yeah. Uh. That's the reality. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I was and expecting something no, to, no, no. to make me feel better. No wisdom. No wisdom here. <laughs> Uh, and and there are some uh, times uh, delayed payment in the contract, yeah. which could be enormous amount of days. Yeah. yeah. Because bigger companies usually work on a credit. Yeah. So this is the, this is the reality, 
and you have to pre be prepared to invest three, four months before yeah. getting your money back. And then after a couple of months have passed, you start calling. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. So you have to be just... Uh, persistent? Persistent yeah. uh, uh, to, the, to the edge of being... Uh, annoying. Annoying, yeah. yeah. So someone wants to get rid of you. Mm. That's why they do what you want. But the real problem is that when, when these two people, that decision maker and the people who the person who works works mm. with you and the, the the people the person who need to push the button for paying is mm. the same person. Yeah. As long as they're different people, yeah. no worries. I can call you every single day. Mm. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the <laughs> uh, sometimes we'll not be very creative to figure out different mm. mails. It could be the same message. Mm -hmm. But still. Yeah, so uh, this is what uh, I have, because I'm, I'm also doing this job, I figured out just being annoying actually works. It works. But it not works. aggressive, but no, no, just, just, annoying. Annoying. just annoying. Just annoying. <laughs> A little bit. Cute and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and this this uh, gets the invoice paid. And be prepared, like have enough money in the bank to yeah, yeah. not be, not be critical. Runway management, yeah. Runway Ooh, management. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest. I'll do my business. Okay. When? <laughs> do you have enough savings yeah. to do that? Uh, it's nice. I, I encourage everyone to think that way. But the reality is that it's very hard and it needs sometimes it needs luck. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Enough uh, enough. enough for the, for this. Okay. Two more two more topics and we're closing. Uh the first one is uh and we can be we can be quick about them. So we tend to discuss modern AI tools and my question is do you use any of the modern AI tools but and by modern I mean mm. ChatGPT and, and uh, all, all that jazz. I'm not the best person in for your this discussion. question yeah, yeah. because uh, in our organization uh, people who are technically leading the 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 teams are deciding on their own. Mm. Uh, and they're bigger forum where we discuss what's good for the company level. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's coming for and you. And for your day to day job, do you use it to write for mine? Yeah, uh, I try, mm. uh, tried several times, and I'm trying to see whether it gives better. For example, I've tried to, to for wording, mm -hmm. uh, it's still not better than me, uh, and still a little bit, how to say, generic. Yeah, no, no. Not very creative. It it gives me just uh, because it's 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 trained mm -hmm. on 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 a stupid articles mm -hmm. in the web. <laughs> it well. gives yeah. me stupid articles from the web. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Got it. Well, if if you've been trained on nine steps how to manage, mm. you deliver these results. Okay. Of course. So in this respect, it doesn't doesn't uh, work very well sometimes when I lie in a bed uh, I chat with it mm. just a regular conversation and sometimes things pop up all right mm -hmm. from for example from a book that I didn't uh, haven't read mm. and sometimes an idea sometimes like like we chat yeah uh, so y you got uh, uh, to 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 think to thoughts yeah and they appear just by chatting for something so you mm. never know so this is what I do uh, I'm trying to play with it making pictures I, I all right like yeah yeah this the image generation is yeah, pretty fun <laughs> like more hobby mm. okay. stuff um, and my son have uh, an idea to make a game so he needs all right yeah a lot of images assets yeah yeah and we're working together on that but for my daily job as a manager I don't think that it understands people yet. Yeah, I and can agree. There are repetitive parts in, in our job. Mm. For example, the same problem again, the same mm. problem, which might be sometimes uh, the reality, but still not very good on detecting them yet. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. And we usually, after we talk about AI, we like to finish with the human side of things, mm. because after all, we are humans, and that's that's the important thing. So, how 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 do you rest and recharge? Because your work is quite stressful and long hours. So, 
how do you rest and recharge? Well, the first thing that I would say to all the managers uh, that are dealing with the customers, don't fill your schedule for two reasons. If, if your schedule is full with meetings, you don't have time and ability to get something critical. Mm. And you may miss opportunity to work with your team, to be available for your team, to be available for customers. So if there is a schedule which is more than 40, 50% full, mm -hmm. that's not good. Okay. And the second thing is that I do is I, I have too many hobbies. Uh, and I honestly say to many sites, I love to cook. Usually I cook at home. Mm. Um, I, I'm a carpenter. Mm, I Which is really work, impressive. Yeah, would say even skilled one. <laughs> uh, I like the sea. I like to ski. Mm. Uh, pff, what else? I'm, I'm not afraid of mud and dust. I like tents and nice. mountain. Nice. Bikes, football. So... Uh, I love being with my kids because they're grown kids and mm. we have very few moments being together in the family. So when I have a chance to be mm. with them, uh, it's I, I try to be a quality one because they're grown mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. yeah. already. Uh, what I hate is waiting and wasting. Mm. Those are mm. the two things that can make me mad. And... Yeah, other than that, read. I, I love to read. Mm. Uh, I love to move because moving is the best way to to get yourself out of the the chemicals mm. of stress. Yeah. So that's why I would ad advise everyone who who works on a stressful work to to, really to find a way to sweat mm. at least mm. every two days. Yeah, walking is part is extremely important and I more I than walking just, yeah, just more than hard work and even if you can get to hard work then walking sometimes really helps yeah. if you can get yeah. nothing yeah. awesome and if you see an improvement to our table <laughs> Sabi being a very talented carpenter uh, yeah. <laughs> another one <laughs> promised <laughs> <laughs> we will say if it's Sabi's work but uh, he proposed uh, carving some but we, you, you will see you will see we don't know what yeah, we don't know why. We see. <laughs> well, Sabi, thank you, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I think this topic was really interesting. It's not talked as much on various medias and, and podcasts. And I believe we gave an initial insight about what's happening. I hope so. In the business. And this will, uh, I believe this will make people realize more the work of their managers and the work of their leaders uh, and appreciate it more because I do hope because it is really not appreciated enough because it's it, not it understood. Not. You don't know, you don't know what I do. Yeah, exactly. And that's that that's why we wanted to, to yeah, have you, this you conversation. Yeah. Uh, and we have we usually have not usually we have <laughs> a gift for our guests. Ooh. So we are giving you a gift. Uh, and do I open it right now? If you want and to record uh, the impression this is entirely up to you yeah. entirely up to you. it's a small swag box uh, with hack soft stuff cool and so we... in order to know what's inside you have to earn your place here yes. on this microphone <laughs> exactly exactly and we use quality fabrics for everything so people actually wear them uh and once again next time i'll be prepared yeah <laughs> we, you are coming for Run. sure uh for, for a second episode with Sabi on Hackcast. Again, thank you very much for being thank here. You. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found, you found this episode insightful. Ivo, close it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and until next time.